Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much uh, for uh, joining this presentation. Um, so like Chris said, my name is uh, Scott Goyesh, and uh, just a little bit of my background. Um, I'm currently going into uh, my 11th year teaching. Well, hopefully that will be uh, going back here, I guess, in the fall. Uh, looks like that way now, so we'll see what happens. And uh, so basically I started off my career as teaching phys ed and French, uh, mostly core French. And then I moved into a principal position at a very small school um, just before the causeway on the other side, the mainland side. And uh, any great experience there, um, very low number of students there. And the school closed after two years and I knew that kind of going the position. And since then I've been French consultant going into my fourth year, it was a mix of principal and that. And, uh, and the last two years um, I've been, uh, part of my assignment has been around health promoting schools, which which I'm extremely passionate about, passionate about both of them. So it kind of uh, goes hand in hand, being that I have a degree from St. Evex with human kinetics in French. Um, so it's certainly under my field of study here for sure. So I'm very much enjoying it. I am by no means a, an expert with health promoting schools and still learning the ropes and so on. Um, the people who were in it uh, before me kind of had the role um, as part of their assignment along with a very busy one. Um, I feel that with my uh, current assignment, I can certainly enhance it based, especially with my background uh, with regards to healthy living in phys ed. And uh, I very much enjoy it. So I'm, I'm very looking forward to showcase uh, some of the things that go on in the Strait Regional Center for Education with health building schools, especially in the last two years that I've been in the role. Um, the way I facilitate conversations and presentations, um, I'm very much discussion based. Um, feel free to jive in. Do not worry about interrupting me. Don't say sorry or anything like that. Just interrupt if you want to talk about a point or something that comes up based on what I'm saying or any questions. Uh, certainly don't have to leave that till the end. However, there will be an opportunity at the end to uh, have some final thoughts and questions. Um, my goal today is basically, again, to showcase some of the initiatives that we do with health promoting schools to kind of learn about what health promoting schools is. And I'll kind of just go briefly about that at the beginning of my presentation. Um, and I just want to let you know that health promoting schools, uh, unfortunately, doesn't look, and maybe it's a good and bad thing, doesn't look the same throughout the whole province. We're very much working towards that now. There is somebody in a role that kind of um, uh, looks over all the health promoting schools that uh, in each regional center for education, but some have committees, for example, some don't. And I'll talk a little bit about that throughout my presentations. However, I think the goals, the ultimate goals within health promoting schools, because we have a guiding document that we have to follow uh, from 2015, which is going to be um, updated here, I'm hoping in the next year. Um, we all have the same intent and the goal to uh, basically support the whole school environment um, uh, with regards to overall well-being, meaning the physical, social, emotional, mental health. All right. So I'll get right into my uh, presentation here and uh, hopefully everything uh, works well. Hopefully um, the technology cooperates today. So. <clears throat> all right. Could somebody out of the crew answer just to make sure that everything is, you're seeing the presentation here? Looks good, Scott. Yep, everything okay. looks great. Perfect, perfect. So uh, the way I titled the presentation, it's Health Promoting uh, Schools 101, um, since it is very much an introductory uh, to health promoting schools. Um, so I kind of went over the introduction and the goals of the presentation, and that was just my write up there um, that you would have seen uh, when you signed in for the Summer Learning Academy. Um, so again, looking to just showcase all the initiatives with health learning schools. My goal today though, that I didn't mention is that I hope that you at least get one or two things today. If you can get more fantastic, um, that you can bring back to your school as ideas, especially right now in the times that we're in, I think that, uh, wellness and well-being has never been more on an uprise than it is now. Um, uh, but, uh, and my, and I know I'm very biased in saying this, um, we all have a system improvement plan and we have the literacy and math. And I feel that literacy and math cannot happen without wellness. And I just don't feel that way. Obviously there's a lot of research that determines that. Um, and that's the whole mind and body. Um, there's, there's lots of books and, and articles that uh, refer to that. Um, so I'm going to talk about some things that, uh, you know, especially going back into the times that we just kind of lived in and what we're going to live in 
here um, beginning in September. I think there's some things here that you can certainly utilize in your classroom um, to create a positive learning, a positive and engaging learning environment for all your students. So uh, what is health promoting schools? Um, kind of mentioned it, it is a recognized framework for supporting improvements in students' educational outcomes while addressing school health in a planned, integrated and holistic way. And it's not just what happens in the, in the classroom. And like I said, it does encompass the whole uh, school environment. Um, so it's really related to everybody who works in the schools and it is divided into four pillars. And I'm gonna show you an action plan, just a, my action plan that I had this year, just an example of how it kind of works. Um, and I'm gonna highlight some of those things within the four pillars. So we're gonna go over each of the pillars and the way I'm kind of gonna conduct this presentation is once we go over social and physical environment, I'm going to show you all the things of pictures that we did and just talk about what we did with that particular pillar. Um, health promoting schools, what they want us to do is to, um, they want us to divide it up as equally as possible to not have all your goals and all your funding to go towards social and physical, for example. They really want us to divide it up. So that's what we try to do within um, our action plan. So how does it work, first of all? So at Health Promoting Schools here, for example, um, we hold meetings once a month. Um, usually we skip the month of March just because of March break. Um, so we start off right away in September and uh, we finish with uh, one in May. And usually then there is a smaller sub like action group put together of uh, just a couple of people that actually put the action plan together for the following year. Um, what do our committees consist of? They, they consist of people from the RCE. So for example, um, we have our equity consultant, African Nova Scotian consultant. Um, we also have our uh, programs coordinator um, and we have a physical education and a healthy living teacher on there as well. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, <clears throat> so now we kind of have like a member of understanding or our term of reference, I should say, that uh, the phys ed and health teacher can stay on for a maximum of four years and then switch. So we just made that up this year because it was the same people all along on our committee. And I'm a true believer of building capacity and giving other people's opportunities to kind of voice themselves within this committee. And I think it's a very important committee um, to, uh, uh, to help support uh, schools within the Strait Regional Center for Education, for example. We have a lot of folks from the Nova Scotia Health Authority. We recently just uh, hired a health promoter and uh, she only started in December, so she didn't really have a long stint because once COVID hit, um, everybody, pretty much everybody I know for myself within my committee, um, they were all, their roles and responsibilities were subjected around COVID. Um, so basically nothing to do with the health promoting schools, which obviously was very, very understandable. Um, so um, she is helping enhance health promoting schools within the Strait Regional Center for Education. Um, she is uh, still uh, working, I guess, with the Nova Scotia Health Authority, but it's kind of a split type of position. Um, she um, also uh, helps enhance the system improvement plan within the well-being goal, helps out with breakfast programming, and so on, and uh, we're looking to enhance the role a little bit more. A lot of stuff around vaping, for example. Um, what we did was at one school in particular, um, we formed a, a leadership group of students, and uh, we partake in, in a lot of meetings with those particular students and administration at that school. Um, and with this leadership committee, based on the statistics that we're given, this is just one part of a role that she did this year, which was very much a highlight. Um, what we did was um, they took um, a survey at the school of who vape and the, the, the percentages were extremely high from all the way from grade nine to 12. And it was amazing with the student leadership, what they did very much student led. And um, they actually had their own presentations on their experiences with vaping that they did with the students as well. And it worked phenomenally. And there was a lot of people who quit vaping within that school. We are looking to expand that and actually have them participate at a principal's meeting. That could happen in the next year. I'm not sure what's going to happen with regards to vaping now that juices are banned. Um, but uh, that's something that we're looking to expand for sure. Um, I'm also on the Smoke Free Nova Scotia committee. So they were looking at ideas and they thought it was a phenomenal idea that we could spread possibly throughout the province as we all know that vaping certainly becomes a problem within the schools. So um, we also have a dental hygienist on it. We have a, a, a dietitian, nutritionist, 
and other folks from Nova Scotia Health Authority that are on the committee. Um, we do have uh, two folks from Sport Nova Scotia, and then I mentioned my health promoter. So we have quite a few um, people within that committee. Um, sometimes we have 10, 12, possibly 15 at our meetings, which is fantastic. Um, the meetings, what we do is there is a, <clears throat> we go over everything that's kind of taken place with regards to actions, previous grants that have been approved. They can apply um, with regards to a grant. And I'm going to show you the application process in a second. And then the whole committee votes on it, whether it was approved or not, or not. Does it meet the criteria? How much money we're going to give them based on our budget and so on. So a lot of great things. And uh, the communication has been a lot better with health and schools as well. I send out a schedule at the beginning of the year when our meetings are, when they need to have their applications in. Um, so, and I also send out the criteria of what they need to abide by when they're applying for health promoting school grant. Um, there are three different budgets in health promoting schools. So we have health promoting schools itself. You'll see it in a second when I present my other screen. We have school food and nutrition program. And then we have the school healthy eating program, which is uh, tip, normally known as the breakfast program. So we get three allotments of money every year uh, from the province. Um, and so what I'll do now is I'm just going to go back here. <clears throat> and we're going to share another screen. There we go. Okay. So this is just an example um, of how you apply for them. So on our SharePoint site, um, you see here the title and because some folks think, now I think that uh, this idea is kind of dwindling now, people are really getting the concept that the grants are not specific to replenish um, phys ed equipment rooms. Um, now there are, there are ways of getting equipment, yes, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Basically what they do is, um, it's the title's already there, they have their school name, students involved, and date requested, the amount is something that we just added because before they weren't putting any amounts in it. And then kind of what it's related to, is it related to PEBS, is it related to unstructured play, activity room. So for example, one thing that we do do, um, I'll give the example now, this will be further down in the presentation, our leadership committees. And so basically what the leadership committees do is that we have students who are leading physical activity for younger students outside uh, to get students moving, to get students engaged, and to help resolve conflict and to build capacity. So for example, part A, there are a lot of things that you would click there um, with regards to the leadership committee. Part B, usually it's a startup. Sometimes now in the next few years, it will be an enhancement because all schools right now in the Strait Regional Center for Education have a leadership committee. What uh, grades does it uh, incorporate? And then um, I explain, and then they explain the program and the, the program is explained by me. I presented this at a principal's meeting and then uh, they presented it at their own staff meetings. Um, what are some other partnerships, school board and so on? That's supposed to be straight, re that's supposed to be Regional Center for Education. So that'll be a change that they will make here on SharePoint. They save it. And then, like I said, this is something that we review each meeting. Um, I'm just gonna show you also um, just an example of an action plan. So HPS. So this is what it looks like here. Um, the health promoting schools action plan. Can everybody, everybody see this? Can somebody? Yeah, it looks good, Scott. Good. We're in your oh. document. Great. Um, so with this, you can kind of see the budget of what we would get um, for each one. And then, so for example, the school healthy eating program, um, with that one there, we, um, we typically spend that money right away because myself and the uh, nutritionist from, or dietitian from uh, Nova Scotia Health Authority, we get together, we kind of have our own little formula based on what they received last year, what they're getting from Breakfast Clubs of Canada, and then we equitably distribute the money. There hasn't been any issues with that. Uh, typically schools get enough money and then I know that schools also get other grants from um, you know community as well to help out support their breakfast programming so that's something that goes right away so when I get the money we have our meeting I make up the memos they, we distribute the money right away in one allotment 
Um, and then that's communicated to all administrators who have principals and vice principals included. Then we have the health promoting school. So if you can kind of see here, um, not sure the, why it's not showing the full screen here. Um, however, um, the after goals initiatives and then HPS, the next one uh, would be school food and nutrition. So what we do there is we have to kind of have a write up um, for each one, um, what we're going to be doing type thing. And this is the social and physical environment. So the first one, for example, is community kitchens. In a nutshell, what we're doing is we're getting the schools plus facilitators uh, to put on kitchen brigades or um, uh, community kitchens for students, parents, uh, community members. They can do this after school, during school, and uh, they receive an allotment of money to purchase some of the food, maybe some stuff for recipe books, or even a crock pot as a um, prize to give out uh, for uh, the particular um, for the participants who, um, who excuse me who participate in the actual event. Um, so that's something that we do, and it's all around food literacy and healthy eating, and giving uh, families some uh, some more ideas on some healthy recipes, increased physical activity. Um, so for example, some schools don't always have the opportunity to go to a pool because it's not close by. So this could be something, for example, there's a YSF group this year, and I'm just picking ideas on top of my head here. Um, that is about 40 minutes from the pool here in Port Hawkesbury. Um, so I've supported them with some funding through this increased physical activity, which is not a huge uh, amount of money that was allocated here. And basically, they, um, that's some money that they can use for their pool rental or bus trip here, but that, so they can have the opportunity to come swim. So it's basically any physical activity beyond the school day. Um, another one would be uh, flag football. Um, so there were four schools. They put in a grant, and uh, what they wanted to do was um, they wanted to have more or less uh, female students participate in an after-school flag football program against other schools. So that was something to help, you know, purchase equipment. So there's just an example of equipment. It's not, again, to replenish the phys ed room, but it was for this particular activity. Um, I'm gonna talk about brain breaks. I'm not gonna go through all of these right now because um, we're gonna be talking about them uh, very shortly, but I'm just kind of scrolling down. Now you can kind of see teaching and learning. So we had some uh, PD for phys ed teachers this year, uh, two days, one for elementary, one for uh, secondary. 7 to 12. Um, this one here was very, very expensive, but uh, very, very worth it. Um, healthy living teachers, what I've been doing since I've been in the role, I believe that we need to have a stronger focus on health and healthy living and how we can integrate more health and healthy living concepts within uh, the other subjects. Um, so um, I started off with grade sixes um, last year, this year, it was grade five uh, teachers. So I had about 30 grade five teachers within the uh, regional center. And uh, what we did was I had some people from the Nova Scotia Health Authority. So I picked the three main themes, which I thought were very important that stood out that had more outcomes, or maybe some of the ones that certainly should be discussed a little bit more within uh, this run of a school day kind of thing with regards to healthy living. Um, so there was a presentation on healthy relationships. Um, there was another one on nutrition and another one on mental health. And then they had time in the afternoon to collaborate and talk about some of the other outcomes there as well. Go to training is something that I partner with the student services. And uh, so with this here, um, they um, it's we need some teachers to be go to trainers within the school. Um, we had a lot this year. So this was not something that we uh, did as part of our training. We did the PATS program, though. Um, so we trained over, I think, 40 teachers and CYCPs on PATS. Um, uh, PD for healthy living teachers. Um, this is something that is uh, mandatory here where what we do is we have facilitators that train all grade nine healthy living teachers on the mental health supplement. Um, as we all know, mental health can be a very context, uh, complex sorry, uh, topic. And uh, so they receive the appropriate training on how to deliver uh, that uh, unit to their students. Great day. Um, we also did some wilderness first aid training for our phys ed teachers. Moving on to the healthy uh, school policy. Um, so this is stuff where we give snacks. So this is the school food and nutrition part. Um, so it's all around food literacy. So what we do is we provide healthy snacks for um, students that have exams. So all schools get a certain amount of money so they can put some apples, 
um, possibly some neutral grain bars, um, whatever. No bottles of water. We are encouraged using the tap water. Um, so basically, and else do all um, schools have fill stations now as well. So it's just to provide them with healthy snacks that they can take into their exams with them uh, that won't cause any disruption. Also, we do support the science and heritage fair with that, as well as the provincial exams. Tap the tap program is something that we also do. This is water bottles for all great primary students to encourage more water consumption. And uh, youth health center support. We always support the youth health centers, both on the snack side as well as on the HPS side through presentations. And then we have our grant application. So this is kind of the criteria and what we use here. And the more important part is the flexibility uh, in funding provides funding for initiatives that focus on nutrition, physical activity, and mental health promotion and leadership. And so these are all things here that um, when they apply, they kind of have to follow this criteria. And there's more of a larger amount of money for that. I will talk about the decals and sensory paths in a bit. Um, we also have some health promoting themes that I will talk about. So we kind of follow the health promoting calendar, not to a T because there's some themes that we certainly don't agree with there that need to be updated. We have a parent navigator. We support that person with some money as well, um, to perform press to, you know, to give presentations, um, or honorarium fees, travel, etc. And then also I will talk about the last one, the parent student community information on student wellness. So that's just an example of what an action plan looks like. So there's certainly a lot to it. All action plans look different. I got to see one, for example, in Tri-County not too long ago, we shared uh, each of ours and uh, it was uh, very interesting to see um, the write up for both. Um, so we're looking to collaborate a little bit more with all the health promoters. I, I had an interview last week, actually, um, with the person who was in charge of them. And my, my ultimate suggestion is to see more collaboration because I feel that, you know, there's a lot of people that are holding back a lot of great ideas that could be happening in other regions. And I think that if we're here for all the students, we need to, uh, we need to collaborate a little bit more, share some ideas, some ideas and strategies, techniques and strategies that we're using in each of our areas to further enhance um, well-being and wellness uh, throughout the whole province. Um, any questions so far? Feel free to jive in. Sorry, I just uh, I get on a little spree of, of talking here. So certainly feel free to interrupt me at any time again. Um, I'm just going to go over now just the four pillars and talk about some of the things that you just saw within the, um, the grants. Um, so here, uh, the social and physical environment is divided in two. Um, so it's about, you know, the relationships, building relationships, the emotional well-being of students, more or less, is the social environment. The physical environment talks about the buildings, the grounds, the play space, you know, playground equipment and all that stuff. And also um, sanitation and air cleanliness, which is something that we could be looking into for next year because I can guarantee my plan will look a lot different um, than what I had as planned. What are some things that we did within the social and physical environment? First of all, I'm gonna start off with this one on the top left. We had the box program. And with the box program, my big thing since I got into this role is to try to incorporate brain breaks within the classroom. Now, I know a lot about brain breaks and I read a couple of books um, such as the four pillars of, um, four pillars to successful education and finish education. Um, and uh, Passy Salberg, who is one of the most knowledgeable educators in the world. Um, so I, I, I read some stuff about that and how they incorporate the more physical activity throughout the day. And then you kind of see the relationship between um, them, the students obviously being physically active and academic achievement. There's also the book on the revolutionary uh, neuroscience of exercise in the brain by John Rady, John A or John J. Rady. Anywho, um, that big yellow book and uh, um, that one there does talk about a school in uh, Naperville that they uh, basically, the students there uh, walked, jogged, ran a mile. They were only against themselves. It was not a competition before classes started every morning. And it was amazing to see. It was showed kind of the part of the book, probably about one um quarter of the book was about that. Then the other three quarters were about the benefits with regards to academic achievement and mental health. And uh, it was amazing to see the results. Um, if you ever have a chance to read it, certainly uh, worthwhile to see the results and, and, and how exercise certainly influences um, our learners. 
Um, the one in the middle, um, that is our Unified Sport. So Unified Sport has, um, what Unified Sport is basically, is uh, it's kind of growing all over Canada. I'm not really sure what's happening in the other countries, to be quite honest with you. I've done a little bit of research within Canada. For example, Saskatchewan has a phenomenal program. And I spoke to somebody there about it to gain some ideas off of them. Um, and so basically we have some students with, you know, intellectual, physical disabilities, um, also with other uh, student leaders involved. They have their own jerseys. They're part of a team. It is uh, amazing to see if you ever have a chance to go see any of the jamborees is what they call them. Um, so there's about right now we have seven schools here um, who have teams. We're trying to grow it a little bit more. And we also have two junior high teams that we're willing to start this year. However, when everything happened with COVID, um, they were supposed to join a tournament with um, within the month of April, I believe. So unfortunately, they didn't get that opportunity, but hopefully we'll see them next year. Um, anyhow, so it, it really is amazing to see. We had our first meeting this year with Unified Sport. And so I had a coach or two coaches, depending on the size of the school. We discussed how Unified Sport was going so far. Um, there was also supposed to be provincials were supposed to be held here uh, this year at CEREC. Um, so there was a lot of plans around getting a ton of teams uh, here for that, um, which was supposed to be a huge event shared between both schools here in Port Hawkesbury. Um, and then is how can we expand the sport? So, unfor you know, not, uh, not unfortunately, I should say, but these students are only exposed right now to basketball, which is great. Um, excuse me. Um, however, um, we're looking to expand those opportunities um, and expose them to other sports. And so um, one of the activities that came up was bocce ball. Very easy, little to no equipment. Um, so that was supposed to be part of my plan for next year to help purchase bocce ball um, sets uh, for each of those schools so that they can hold tournaments after school or during school for these students. So we're looking to kind of have a fall season of bocce ball or spring and then have a winter season of basketball and then, you know, something else. So we're looking at soccer. We're looking at uh, possibly softball, baseball type thing. So looking to, again, expose them to other sports. Um, also, we had the community kitchens. I talked about that one um, to expose families to some healthy recipes and ideas for healthy recipes around food literacy. On the bottom left, um, that is Chris Tremblay. So he is the guy who is in charge of Box. And uh, so Box is Build Our, Build Our Kids Success. And so this is the actual program that I was talking about with regards to brain breaks. I think I got sidetracked there. And uh, so basically um, with this is um, he is the Atlantic coordinator. Um, so basically for PEI, Newfoundland, New Brunswick and us um, with regards to the box program, he comes in and does presentations and also leads box bursts uh, to us. They're known as brain breaks and other box programs uh, to schools. So, he came and presented at our um, physical education um, in service, um, our elementary one, I believe, and did a two hour presentation. And it was probably one of the best presentations that I've seen, maybe because I'm so passionate and interested about it, but he did a phenomenal job. He led, so there are physical activity programs through box uh, for grade seven to 12, others for grade P to six, sorry, uh, grade seven, uh, I believe it's seven to eight so, or seven to nine. And then so nothing yet for 10, 11, 12. They are working on that. And so he showed us some of the exercise. Everything is there um, for you. So everything is just, it's the guide is very, very clear and concise. And so you can run those programs, but there are also box bursts. And so he has little pamphlets for box bursts and so that he gave out. However, that does not justify how many box bursts are out there. Everything is online when you go on the box website. And so once you are a facilitator, you have access to all this and it all is in English and French. There are over now probably, he said 500, this was back in the fall, and they basically give weekly updates. I get weekly emails of five new box bursts, so they're certainly up to about probably close to 600 maybe now, box bursts. Um, they had a lot of stuff on Facebook as well, especially during COVID. Um, he came and presented at our principal's meeting, got people to do them. Um, our RED said that uh, we're complete buy-in for this uh, particular program. It certainly needed and goes hand in hand with our system improvement plan, as well as everybody's wellness goals. I went and personally checked everybody's well-being goals in the 20 schools that we have, and all of them, um, this was something that could have been used as a strategy. So what I started doing after that, I got permission from Chris to go present at all the schools, 
And uh, he kind of gave me a modified presentation to do at staff meetings. And I think I have 10 out of 20 schools, 11 uh, somewhere around there, schools completed. And they're going to hopefully start those box bursts at the schools. And the box bursts also, I do want to mention that uh, they're not intended for grades 9 to 12. We all had fun as adults doing them. That's my justification that grades 9 to 12 will do them. I already have teachers that would love to do them. And I did present already at 9 to 12 school, and there were certainly some buy-in. Students need those breaks, whether it's a two to five minute break, for example. Um, just an example uh, for one of those box bursts, you could have a pylon. So by the little pylons between myself and, for example, Chris. And um, I would, this one's called head, shoulders, knees, pylon. So the facilitator is going to go head, shoulders, knees, pot, and then once you say pylon, whoever grabs the pylon first grabs a point. You can do this in the hallway. You can do this in the classroom, whatever. I started doing more box bursts within the region here. So at any PD events, even principal meetings, vice principal meetings, we're doing brain breaks, um, which is great to get people moving because we all know that some of these, uh, I think staff meetings should do them as well. Sitting there for that span of time, sometimes for myself, even sitting here for a half hour, I need to get up and move. Uh, I get very antsy, haven't been any diagnosed with anything yet, but um, it, you know, we need to move. So we need to think about ourselves here when we're thinking about our students as well. This is one of the big highlights certainly that happened this year, and we're hoping to expand on that uh, in future years. Um, also, we started doing them. Um, I convinced some folks at the Department of Education, my French on the French side of my portfolio, to start doing them as well, and they were very excited because they can certainly be long days. So we started incorpor incorporating uh, brain breaks in, in those sessions as well. Um, the next one is around teaching and learning. So these are just resources to provide supports for teachers around curriculum uh, to help build and improve kind of their skills and their knowledge around health and well-being. Um, so this goes to the PD that we did this year. So on the left there, um, that was just a smaller group of what we actually had, but that was the uh, mental health nine training um, that we did uh, for our healthy living teachers. In the middle here um, with the uh, presenter, you can kind of see the screen there. Um, that is our dietitian that works with the Nova Scotia Health Authority. She's done many presentations uh, with me. And uh, so she is providing the grade six, sorry, the grade five teachers this year uh, some more information on how to deliver content on nutrition for their students. Um, we also had some first aid training. And then on the bottom there, you can kind of see these are some phys ed PD. So we had some folks from Special Olympics Canada. We had floorball. Um, this was all done at the uh, new Chetabucto Lifestyle Complex Center in Guysboro, which is a very nice facility if you ever get to go there. Um, and so those are just a couple of things here that we did uh, with, along with, with PD around teaching and learning. The next one was around uh, health school policy. So this is more around decision-making processes, rules, procedures, and policies at all levels that promote health and well-being, um, and also that shape a respectful, welcoming, and caring school environment. So uh, this one here, for example, again, we gave water bottles to all the great primary students. Um, these are um, some healthy snacks that we provided uh, for exams, for example, provincial exams, unfortunately didn't happen this year, or finals, uh, or heritage or science fair. Um, but uh, we're really trying to build on that and get students to help make those snacks as well, to cut them up and so on. So we've been working a little bit more around that food literacy piece. Also, we did train. Um, uh, it was two, two trainings that we did last year, and it was all around uh, food safety. So it was the, your, your kind of your initial course that you had to take around food safety. Um, so we trained quite a few teachers and secretaries and so on around that. And we're looking to also train students and then youth health center support as well. And uh, the last one, certainly not least, is partnerships and services. So this one here uh, was more or less connections between students and families. We're really trying to build a rapport with families and communities around well-being and to help reinforce the importance of well-being um, with, their, with the students and, and their children. Um, so uh, we're really working towards that. And I look at partnerships. I mean, I have a ton of partnerships that I'm working with with my own meetings. So it's kind of great to build on that. And we're looking to build capacity within our own committee um, where I'm in contact with my health promoter to try to get some recreation folks also there. So really bring more people in because um, it, it's very much an inviting place to come to the meetings and so on and their snacks and they only last two hours, but we, we certainly get a lot of great conversations in.
So this one here, um, the middle one, um, it is okay to not be okay. So this is the uh, mental health day. So what we did as a part of our, um, there was one of the goals there was around uh, health themes and health promotion themes, I guess. And so for the mental health awareness day on October 10th, I believe it was this year or 9th, um, what we did was provided chalk for all schools and they wrote positive messages outside. Always be your own sunshine. Last year, on the right there, um, you can kind of see some stencils. So what I did was I ordered from a company, and if you want more information on this, I can certainly get it to you. Um, I have the uh, the company's name and their contact information. So what I want to do, what my goal was, was to integrate, and this was on the partnerships and services. It was one of my last goals. I had a small amount of money there, but it ended up working out perfect. I uh, purchased 10 stencils that schools could have. Um, so I have the, the framing and everything. We have, I have a former student of mine who actually works for a uh, painting company now, and he went to those schools and charged them, you know, based on what they were getting type thing. And so it just beautifies really the school grounds around the school and also provides students with more opportunities to move, to have fun, to be engaged, to socialize during recess and during class time. I'm a true believer of, you know, the classroom doesn't have to be the only learning environment. Um, I really think that whether you're a grade two math teacher or a grade 12 physics teacher, you can think, I, I can't give you any ideas on the physics 12, mind you, but I can certainly do it for grade two math. But to use some of these stencils, we had the snakes and ladders, and that was just a jump run. There's some hopscotch ones. There's a four square one. There's a target one. Um, so there's lots of different stencils that are there. We wanted to promote health literacy and, um, CRP when I purchased them as well. Um, so we did that within the stencils that we purchased and um, basically to get students and teachers to go outside and, and integrate some of the activities they're doing in class through movement. And that was one of my focus last year was learning through movement. The one on the left, um, as you see, is a sensory path or decals is what they call them as well. And I got this idea from the rolling school that was on CBC, I believe, in the fall of last year. And so they had students moving uh, within their hallways on, you know, they did the training on the Monday, I believe, on the Saturday beforehand. They had teachers and volunteers to come set them into place. And they had everybody trained by Tuesday and students were moving freely throughout the hallway. If students needed a break, they would go and say, Miss or, or, or Sir, can I go for a break? And they would do so. If they're taking two to three extra minutes to go to the washroom because they need a little bit more movement so they can be more focused in the class, my philosophy is who cares? I think it's great. I really do because it, it gets kids more focused, their attention spans in there, and they are more engaged when they get back to class. Students do not have to use these. This is a perfect hallway. Um, this is a school that did, that kind of jumped they didn't jump the gun that per se. We were talking about it. What they did, instead of waiting for money coming from me, they went and got an NSTU PDF grant and they were approved. And that is one full hallway. And they had enough money to go a little bit down another hallway. You can do push ups. There's numbers, there are letters, there's push ups against the walls, there's some hopscotch, so many different, uh, different types of sensory paths. So that's something that we did this year. I put a, an amount of money of 10,000 actually towards that under this particular. Um, theme and so then I had schools we as a committee we decided that we would get schools um, to apply to if they were interested why they were interested so we had 10 schools do that then how were they going to be utilized and kind of what partnerships so there's a three-step process if you and I sent out lots of reminders I was probably being a pain a little bit but I wanted to make sure that it was fair and equitable for everybody so that they all had the opportunity. If you did not answer, though, and take that initiative, then, unfortunately, um, you didn't get any funding from me. So then they had to prove to me what partnerships they would use because I can only I had 10,000. I had seven schools. Um, it wasn't going to purchase them a whole lot. They had to find those partnerships. Seven schools now have probably over $5,000 and get to have sensory paths within their school. That is another goal that I'm going to do for next year. They're only putting them down right now because of the waxing and all that stuff that's going on in the schools. Um, also, that last goal that was there was around parents, students, community. What our goal was this year was um, I teamed up with the, I partnered up with the uh, child youth care practitioners. We have six of them. And what we did was we created a presentation using the eight pillars of mental health and wellness. So, 
Um, these are the uh, eight pillars, I guess, that nurture positive mental health by Dr. Stan Kutcher. And what we did was we want to provide more education and knowledge to parents and community members around this so they can reinforce these at homes, especially around sleep, exercise, healthy eating, positive relationships. Um, so basically there was gonna be a presentation. Um, we had eight presentations planned where all schools would be integrated depending on where their location was. Um, and so we're hopefully looking to do that next year, uh, pending on the rules and regulations of what we have to abide by. Um, but the presentation is complete. And then we also had extra money to purchase uh, possible gym memberships or somewhere where they can purchase some healthy foods or whatever the case may be, uh, pending on their location as well. So that was something else that we were looking to do this year, but unfortunately it did not take place. Um, other things that happening through their applications through HPS this year um, at one particular school, they had some students who had some mental health problems that had some anger problems and so on. So and they had to deal with those emotions. They had a nice space for a weight room. They applied to get some uh, equipment for that weight room for those particular students. So again, not for phys ed equipment, but for the weight room. Um, for those students. So that was something that um, that was something that was approved this year. Also, um, I um, we had the first adapted phys ed program. Um, this was a school actually in Richmond. I was the teacher for that program and uh, for a few years and we enhanced that program quite a bit within those years. Um, and it's even it's even bigger now. Um, so uh, it was a great opportunity to give extra physical activity uh, for some students who had uh, intellectual physical disabilities um, and also provide leadership for other students to come in those programs. So it kind of goes hand in hand a little bit with the unified sport. And uh, so there were uh, two other schools actually um, who decided to implement or start up an adaptive phys ed program and they needed some startup equipment for that. That was something that approved. I was approved. Yep. Scott, sorry, there was a question that just popped up in the chat box from Megan. Sure. She says, I'm a CYCP. Are you willing to share the pillars presentation? 100%. Yeah. And we can have that posted up into the shared slide deck on the website. Uh, <coughs> yeah. After the session. Yep. Yep. That's no problem at all. No problem. Uh, okay. Um, Next thing is um, also the uh, everybody can everybody can hear me again. Sorry. Yes, we're we're still hearing good. you. Okay, good. sounds good. Okay. Um, also, we had recipe books, so there was you know some different things, some different presentations around LGBTQ, and then I talked about the unified sport. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was um, leadership committees, and uh, that's in some of these slides here. So again, what we had was, this was a big one that was approved. So this was equipment specifically that can be borrowed, not from the phys ed teacher, but that was intended for these leadership groups. So we started these last year and I had 16 schools out of 20 done. Excuse me, this year we had the rest of them. So it could be grade seven and eight, could be grade five and six, all depends on the grade configuration at the school. And these students would go and uh, I would go over there and train them along with the CYCP. And my goal was to train him on these games. These were um, little to no equipment games um, that they were trained. And so I would, you know, do the games and so on. Then I would talk about how to adapt and modify the games. If it was students that they maybe had were in a wheelchair or had a physical disability and so on. Um, you know, how to actually, it was kind of almost like how to be a phys ed teacher is what I did. Um, part of the training, um, how to get students attention, how to deal with conflict. Um, so we talked about the PATS. We also talked about Kelso's model because some schools still use Kelso's model. Um, so what I did was um, they printed out a ring of games. So kind of like what a lot of TAs use around um, their, their waist. They would have kind of like a little ring with little pamphlets with, game, like with um, schedules, I guess. That's what they would do so the students could have that in their pocket. They would have their own equipment to take out. We would have about three, four, five liters a day, depending on the size of the school. We even had schools in Antigonish, for example, where uh, St. Andrews Junior School is right next door to AEC. So we had two leadership groups. We had St. Andrews Junior School grade seven students. They would come over during the first recess, lead games for the younger students. They loved it, loved having the older students there and help resolve conflict, of course. And then we had the grade four students who was 
fantastic group that I did training with. Uh, I think it was about 32 students and they would do it um, at another recess and lead games for younger students. Again, keep students engaged, keep students moving, help build capacity, help. My, my biggest thing was they were learning through teaching, learning through modeling. So basically I told them, you know, if you're running in the hallway, for example, just as an example, um, you would, um, you know, younger students see that they're probably going to copy you, some of them. All right. So you got to think about the behavior that you're doing outside and then think about, hmm, okay, what, what, what are some of the actions that I need to be aware of that I'm doing that may not be appropriate and so on. Um, so again, it was, uh, it was great to see because um, they were dealing with some conflict issues outside. Students were listening to them. If there was anything physical, obviously they would tell an adult or pending on the situation. <clears throat> um, if they need an extra games, they had their phys ed teachers there as well to provide them with those. And the CYCPs went in for extra training on PATS and used proper terminology around Kelso's model and PATS. Um, so the other thing was we also have something from, um, we, we gave this copy, most schools have it, it's called the wheels and the bus go around. This had nothing to do with me, but it's kind of part of this whole leadership type of um, initiative. There was a grade 11 student from Sarek. This would have been years, years ago. Her resume, it was a lot better than mine even at that time. Um, amazing stuff that this particular student uh, did. Um, she's certainly going to be going long ways, especially with the plans that she had. She developed games that she could play on a bus because they had an hour bus ride and trained students when she wasn't there to lead those games to avoid any behavior from happening on the bus. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. That's something that I can certainly share as well um, if, uh, if you're interested. That, oh, sorry. Uh, that's just Kelso's wheel there. So these are some of the things we talk about, some of the things that could take place outside. You might have to ignore something. You might have to tell them to stop, apologize, walk away. And what they did at one school is, um, unfortunately, I can't, I can't um, support or approve clothing. Um, so people ask me, you know, can we buy jerseys or shirts or T-shirts? I said, I'd love to. Unfortunately, it's not eligible to health promoting schools. Um, it's not part of the whole guiding document kind of thing. So, and I was told that very firmly before I got in the position. So what schools did is they purchased their own through um, their SAC or whatever the case may be. And so some of them have hockey jerseys and they have that embroidered on their hockey jersey so that the students can refer to them because it's right there in front of them. So I thought that was pretty cool. So a lot of schools have t-shirts to help identify them. Um, they also make announcements every morning to who are the leaders and it is posted in their classrooms. And they don't have to bother the phys ed teachers with regards to equipment because they have their own as it's all um, purchased from health promoting schools. So here's a big group on the left, for example, that was uh, 65, 70 students, um, grade seven and eight students that I did some training with. Um, here's some schools, uh, another school, they're going outside. They have the uh, things embroidered on their sweaters. Um, and then you have some other ones there in the bottom right corner playing a game with some younger students. And these games can all be played in the winter. There's one game out of all my games that I have that you can't play in the winter time. Some student feedback. I had some videos, but I just I'm gonna I left out those videos uh, due to uh, consent reasons and so on. So I have some quotes that I was able to use. So I really enjoy being on the leadership committee because I feel that uh, we are inspiring the younger students to be leaders, solve problems, and have better cooperation. I am benefiting from being on the leadership committee, from doing on the spot problem solving and building a healthier bond with me and the students. And last but not least, I find that it helps some kids who typically sit down all recess to get up, move and interact with other students. Um, a quote from our CYCP, uh, the leadership committees are a fantastic initiative that aligns nicely with the mental health outcomes. I am willing to bet that any school who commits to support a leadership committee will see a decrease in office discipline referrals. And that's something that we look at when I'm doing the, um, basically we have to do a write up at the end with regards to our system improvement planning. We look at behavior referrals from last year to this year and compare them from month to month. It was very hard to compare month to month this year with everything going on. And I only started some of the training, for example, in November at some schools um, due to different things going on. So. Um, but that's something that we compare and contrast some of that uh, data. Uh, kids don't know what to do when they don't know what to do. Um, by the younger students, uh, we are creating structure. Uh, sorry, uh, by teaching the older students simple, these simple um, fun activities, uh, which they can facilitate for the younger students, we are creating structure 
where there was no structure and we are giving students the opportunity to practice leadership and social skills that will benefit them for the rest of their lives. As a CYCP who is in currently involved in supporting behavior and social emotional learning at tier one and tier two, I am grateful that Scott has included me in the process because it is the perfect medium to teach and reinforce concepts from the PATS program in a natural setting. I uh, also had a video from a principal, but uh, the video is not working right now, but he just talked about how um, it worked. They were the first school to actually do it, so that's why I interviewed them. And uh, he just talked about you know the benefits around having the leadership committee and building capacity was a big thing for him um, around leadership. Other things that we do through uh, health promoting schools is nourish your roots. So there are different farmers and so on schools who are interested. They send an application to myself, which is sent to nourish your roots and they get some healthy crop and vegetables and so on that they can, they usually get it around October, around Thanksgiving weekend, which is a perfect time. Um, so that's something else that is done uh, through health promoting schools. Unfortunately it is canceled as of now for next year, but they're looking at other ways of, um, of doing some of those things. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, I, I hope that you would have gotten something out of it. And so some final thoughts, if anybody wants to jive in, you're probably sick of hearing my voice by now. Um, I, I'm not offended at all. Um, so basically, if you want to answer one of these questions, totally up to you, totally optional. But basically, one thing you got out of the presentation, one idea that you'll take back to your school, or is and are there any questions you have around health promoting schools? I just wanted to say thank you for your presentation. It was great information and it's nice seeing um, that similar things are happening um, in AVRCE that are happening in other areas, which is great. That's great to see. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, we're, we're really looking to collaborate a little bit more because there's a lot of great ideas, as I know of, uh, that's going on in your region that I'd like yeah. to do here, right? So, but we need that Absolutely. communication we and should, contact, which is chat important. Further. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. We can certainly do that. So, and, and on the last slide too, folks, um, I'll go back to the questions, but my email is there. So it's uh, my first dot last name at srce.ca. If you want to just take a few seconds, if you need to copy that down. And I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll write it in the chat box here as well. But uh, go any other comments hi scott hi hi it's joyce Talbot. hi joyce yes how are you good. good um i really appreciated this um just starting a position a guidance position at two new schools and uh i'm new to, well returning to guidance after many years so um yeah i was really interested in everything you had to say and yeah, I would love to connect again and, and learn more about this program. So thank you very much. Great, no problem. No problem at all. Carrie, did you did you have something to add or? I just wanted to say thank you as well. I really appreciate your presentation. Um, as a teacher slash administrator, um, you know, looking forward, I think mental health is so important. Um, so it's wonderful to, I'm going to look into the box program and, you know, just thinking of ways to get students moving in the classroom because to expect students who have been kind of like free range children for six months to kind of transition mm -hmm. back into a classroom and like not move from their square is definitely going to be a challenge for everyone. So I think it's yep. so important to incorporate these activities and things. So I do really appreciate the information. Great. Great, no problem. Yeah. And, and, and with regards, like again, I, I talked about the movement and and that that four pillars uh, book by uh, Passy Salberg, uh, who again I will say is the most to me is the most knowledgeable educator in the world of what he's done with the Finnish education system. It's it's unbelievable. And the I think it was the National uh, Pediatrics American System that they, 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 there was a quote and it was just around the process of you know. Um, 
uh, movement or increased movement leads to improved cognitive uh, processing, which thus increases academic achievement and stuff. And that quote has always stuck with me for sure. And I, I look at myself as a learner and you're, and you're sitting there for an hour in, in a biology class and, and people will argue too. And I've had print other principals tell me, well, you know, you can't tell me that a student can't sit there for an hour. I said, well, not every student can. And you know, that's why stations and all that stuff, and you're sitting there and you're just watching the president. That's why university, it can be painful sometimes sitting in an auditorium listening to a professor for an hour. And uh, whether you're interested in the topic or not, you don't get the move, right? So I just really do think that, uh, you know, box programs, sensory pads, stencils, any other way to get people to move is certainly beneficiary. Thank you very much, folks, and uh, for taking the time to, to be here with the presentation, as Chris mentioned, and uh, enjoy the rest of your summer.